everybody and welcome back to for the booze for the booze for the booze happy halloween <laughs> hell yeah get me halloween some candy day corn is finally upon us That's right happy halloween it's finally here you like dragging your kids around kicking and screaming get all the candy <laughs> come on we all know the truth that candy's for us it is don't let them tell you any different and do like we've learned, and bring a wagon. Yeah, that's a pretty smart idea. <laughs> yes. Sticks all over it, it works out great. It depends on how little your kids are. Yeah. But hey, whatever, it works. <laughs> but like I said, don't forget to go through your kids' candy, check it, and eat it. Yes. Most of it. But give, them, give them some. But check it first. Yeah. And then take the good stuff. Anything that looks like an edible, throw it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, we are back, and this is going to be the conclusion of the two-parter Haunted Disney series. Yes. And I really hope you guys enjoy this, because we really enjoyed doing this. This was something we thought up. We just thought it would be different, and I, I really liked it. I have thoroughly enjoyed this so far, and I am ready to continue the Disney saga. Yeah, heck yeah. So what do you got going on, Megan? Anything new? Nope. No, nope. well, I can see the look on your face. Nothing nope. new. Nothing new. Just super duper excited for tonight. I am. I'm so excited. Yeah, <laughs> I really am. Going up <laughs> the trick or treating. What are you going to be for Halloween? Uh, probably just either. pretty. Well, maybe. Oh yeah, you're hot. I either I, my go to like I have stuff to do. A cat, like just a general cat, black yeah. shirt, black pants. I have a little tail, a bow tie, really? and some ears, and I usually do my key cat makeup. I'm not against us or Harley Quinn. Because I have all that Really stuff not too. against that either. <laughs> Pigtails and red and black hair. But yeah, we are on to the second part. And like we had told you last week, we are making our way over to California, to Anaheim, to the original Disneyland park. The original park. And this is one I actually didn't really know a lot about because I've never been there. Yeah, you I know, know. This was just always the yin to the yang here in Orlando. So it was kind of interesting to do some reading on this place. And I found out it's really not that different. Really? Yes, it's smaller. Really? By a lot. I would have not a, not have ex- what words, <laughs> Megan? Words. It's. I would not have expected that. It's it's a lot smaller, and from what I've heard, it's because of the land around Disneyland. They were never able to like expand without spending way too much money. But huh. when they bought the land in Orlando, they bought a hundred and sixty acres, and everything outside of it was pretty easily obtainable. So. Yeah. Well, which is crazy because Orlando's pretty big and booming and they're still putting stuff up mm. constantly i mean it, there's just so much space well not that much anymore but out there and i mean disney world seems like its own city at this point oh it absolutely does and it has its own city the yeah. celebration city or whatever celebration. All the, yeah all, <laughs> all the houses the celebrations they make it sound like they're partying in the streets every night well they have like their own freaking <laughs> suburb it's they crazy do. oh oh yeah yeah no celebration florida is its own town i know what you're talking about it's the i can't remember what it's called yeah but they're like they're resort. all the, all the houses yes. are modeled after disneyland but it's a but it's a, a neighborhood yeah go, but it's part of disney go check them out because the the it's weird. artwork and like the just the detail that they put into the architecture it's of the cool, house itself is cool but it's culty and weird it it really is it is it really is i, I don't know <laughs> man i don't know i'm sure they are astronomical oh god in, yeah in price yeah because so. they've got other resorts all kinds of stuff it's crazy yeah. so I think we should just go ahead and get into this. You know, I'm sure that people want to know the story. We could go back and forth about how weird Disney is all night long. (laughs) And let's get underway with our conclusion of our Halloween special. Let's do it. So today's story is brought to us by a day in LA tours.com, wikipedia.com, of course, saferamerica.com realreviews.com, itsblossom.com, and mapquest.com. For more than 60 years, the happiest place on earth has been a little park in Southern California called Disneyland. This 160-acre piece of land had humble beginnings as an orange grove before Walt Disney transformed it into an enchanted land that's had more visitors since it opened than any other theme park in the world. 
originally named the Mickey Mouse Park and then Disneylandia before settling on Disneyland. Disney purchased 160 acres for the park in Anaheim and started construction in 1954. Disneyland opened on July 17, 1955 with 18 rides and attractions. Just one year after Disneyland opened its doors, 5 million people had already visited the park. As of 2019, more than 700 million people have visited Disneyland. The history of Disneyland is more than six decades long, and in that time, the park has grown and evolved with the times, but has managed to hold on to the magic that brings people of all ages back to visit and dream of visiting year after year. Fans of the park will tell you there's just something about it, something special, that makes it a place unlike any other. When you enter the gates of the park, you pass through a tunnel and under the famous plaque that reads, quote, Here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. The history of Disneyland starts in the 1940s. Walt Disney first spoke of creating an amusement park while taking his daughter to ride the carousel at Griffith Park in Los Angeles. As he watched his girls from a park bench, he dreamed of creating a place that families could enjoy together, where children could play and parents could relax. By the 1940s, Walt Disney Studios had become well known for its cartoon characters, including Mickey Mouse, and animated films such as Snow White. Disney started receiving letters from fans who wanted to visit the studios. They wanted to do more than just go to the movies. They wanted to be part of an experience. Disney knew the actual studio wouldn't offer much in terms of entertainment for the public, so he started dreaming up a place for tourists to visit. He spoke of creating a place both children and adults would enjoy, where their favorite characters and films could come to life. In 1948, Walt Disney sent a now famous memo to the studio production designer, Dick Kelsey, outlining his ideas for, quote, Mickey Mouse Park. The typical amusement park in those days wasn't a family-friendly place to visit. They were dirty and disorganized, known for over-serving patrons at the beer stand and for attracting a criminal element. And Disney wanted his park to be different. The original concept was slated to be a small park with a boat ride and a few themed areas on an eight-acre plot across the street from Walt Disney Studios in Burbank. But the project soon outgrew the proposed location. Disney started visiting other parks for inspiration, and as his ideas grew and more designers got involved in the planning, it became clear they needed a much bigger space to hold the park they envisioned. They found the space they needed at a cost they could afford 27 miles southeast of Los Angeles. Purchasing a 160-acre orchard of oranges and walnut trees in Anaheim, the Mickey Mouse Park project became Disneylandia and finally morphed into Disneyland. In 1954, construction began on the site. Just one year and $17 million later, Disneyland was ready to open its doors to the public. On Sunday, July 17, 1955, Disneyland opened its gates for the first time with 18 rides and attractions in five lands including Adventureland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, and Main Street USA. Park admission cost just $1, plus tickets for individual attractions. That sounds like quite a deal compared to the $129 single pass in 2020. In the years that followed, Disneyland pushed the boundaries of technology and creativity and influenced the design of theme parks, roller coasters, and other attractions around the world. To this day, it is still the most popular theme park in the world. In 1956, just one year after opening, Disneyland had welcomed 5 million visitors. In 1957, it had already achieved 10 million guests through the gate. And the rest, as they say, is history. The Disneyland Resort in California is undoubtedly one of the most popular amusement parks in the country, following closely behind Walt Disney World in Orlando. Disneyland was the first of the Disney parks to open and has one of the largest cumulative attendance records in the world. Since its opening in 1955, 
there have been 25 deaths that have occurred at Disneyland or occurred later from an injury that was sustained there. A large portion of deaths were from natural causes, but some were due to the park's negligence. Out of the 25 fatalities that have occurred at Disneyland California, there are seven incidents in which a park guest died because of a ride. A ride named America Sings, formerly called Carousel of Progress, had only been open for a week on July 8, 1974, when 18 year old Deborah Gale Stone died. Graduated from Santa Ana High School and was working at Disneyland for the summer. During an intermission of the ride, she slipped or jumped between a revolving wall and a platform within the ride. No one knows whether she was not fully trained or whether it was an accident, but she was crushed between the wall and the platform. The ride was shut down for the next two days while the scene was cleaned up. Disney installed warning lights and breakaway walls after the incident occurred. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad This popular roller coaster unfortunately derailed on September 5th, 2003. There was a mechanical failure due to improper maintenance, leaving the wheel fasteners loose and not up to specifications. As the train entered a tunnel, the axle came loose and jammed, causing the locomotive to fly up in the air, hit the ceiling of the tunnel, and then it fell on top of the first passenger car, injuring 10 riders and killing a 22-year-old man. His cause of death was blunt force trauma and internal bleeding. In January of 1984, a 48-year-old woman from Fremont, California named Dolly Young was riding the Matterhorn bobsled when she was thrown from the ride. The next oncoming bobsled struck the woman and decapitated her, killing her instantly. After investigating further, it was discovered that her seatbelt was not buckled. It is unknown whether she unbuckled herself or if it malfunctioned. Two deaths happened on the People Mover before it was shut down in August of 1995. The first incident was in August of 1967, after just one month of the ride being open. A 16-year-old boy was jumping between two moving cars when the ride passed through a tunnel and he stumbled and fell onto the track. The boy was crushed under an oncoming train of cars and dragged for a few hundred feet before the ride was stopped. Then again in the summer of 1980, an 18-year-old was jumping between moving cars and died in the same way. In the super speed tunnel, he fell and was crushed and dragged right underneath it. At Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin in October of 2000, a four-year-old boy fell out of the ride and was dragged under the car, causing serious internal injuries, brain damage, and even cardiac arrest. He eventually died from those injuries nine years later. It was ruled that Disney was liable for his death because they failed to call for medical help in a timely manner. In December of 1998, an incident occurred on the sailing ship Columbia that injured two people and killed one. A metal cleat became loose from the ship and flew through the air, striking a 33-year-old man in the head. He was taken to the hospital and died two days later from blunt force trauma. In the investigation, it was discovered that financial corners were cut when replacing the tie line and the new one broke. OSHA also fined Disney for not properly training the employee who was running the ride. All deaths within Disneyland aren't always because of rides with problems or even inside the park itself. There have been a number of guest altercations and incidents that have happened everywhere from inside the park to the parking lot. On August 29, 2019, a 38-year-old construction worker was fatally injured when a steel plate fell on him while working in a trench with other employees. Paramedics tried to perform CPR, but the man later died at a nearby hospital. On March 7, 1981, an 18-year-old man was fatally stabbed with a knife during a fight with a 28-year-old man, after the victim supposedly pinched the man's girlfriend in Tomorrowland. His family sued the park for $60 million. The jury found the park negligent for not summoning outside medical help and awarded the family $600,000. On September 14, 1985, a seven-year-old girl from Torrance, California was crushed to death between the wheels of a Disneyland bus. The girl was walking across the parking lot with her uncle while looking for his car when she fell under a moving charter bus that crushed her. 
Paramedics pronounced her dead at the scene. On March 7, 1987, a 15-year-old boy was fatally shot in the Disneyland parking lot. The incident began as an early morning confrontation between rival gang members before escalating into a brawl. 18-year-old Kaledi Na'ei was convicted of second-degree murder, but the conviction was subsequently overturned by a state appeals court. On October 17, 2010, a 61-year-old man from Hickman, California, jumped to his death from the Mickey and Friends parking structure's top floor. He left behind a note citing, quote, personal issues for his suicide. Two years later, on April 2, 2012, a 23-year-old man was found near the northwest corner of the Mickey and Friends parking structure and was pronounced dead at the scene. It was investigated as a suicide at the time, but there were no witnesses that saw the man jump. At the Hyperion Theater on April 22, 2003, a 36-year-old stage technician fell 60 feet from a catwalk in the theater, prompting an investigation by the California Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The victim did not regain consciousness following the incident and died on May 18, 2003. In October 2003, OSHA fined Disneyland Resort $18,350 for safety violations related to the technician's death. On June 17, 1966, 19-year-old Thomas Guy Cleveland from Northridge, California, was killed while attempting to sneak into the park by climbing onto the monorail track. Ignoring the security officer's shouted warnings, he was struck by the train and dragged 30 to 40 feet down the track. The security guard later stated that he had to, quote, hose the kid off the underside, unquote. The waterways of Disney have always been a source of problems. On June 20th, 1973, an 18-year-old New York resident and his 10-year-old brother stayed on Tom Sawyer's Island past closing time by hiding in an area that is off-limits to the guests. When they wanted to leave the island, they tried to swim across the rivers of America, though the younger boy didn't know how to swim. The older boy attempted to carry his brother on his back and drowned halfway across. His body was found the next morning. The younger brother was able to stay afloat by dog paddling until a ride operator later rescued him. All in all, Disneyland is a very safe place to visit with family and friends, and the company goes to great lengths to keep it that way. But when human behavior is factored into the equation, it seems all bets are off. Much like Walt Disney World, Disneyland is often criticized for its reported policy of not allowing ambulances and marked emergency vehicles into the park when needed. Their thinking is that seeing an ambulance might upset the guests and take them out of their happy, quote, Disney mood and therefore spend less money. And of course, just like Walt Disney World, there's an urban legend that no one has ever died on Disneyland property because health officials aren't allowed to declare death until the body has been removed outside the park's gates. Though Disney Company has never, and likely never will, comment on this assertion. Claims do exist by former cast members that, quote, no one dies on Disney property. And it's not just deaths that occur here at Disneyland. Just like its Florida counterpart, there are lots of dark things that happen at the park. People have been known to scatter their ashes of the loved ones in the Haunted Mansion. Sound familiar? Did you think all the scary props in the Haunted Mansion were fake? Well, maybe most of them are. But the notorious mansion still holds a really creepy secret within its walls. Apparently, a lot of people like to scatter the ashes of their loved ones inside the attraction. It's known to happen at least once a month, and employees even have a secret code for when it happens. Quote, HEPA cleanup, unquote. HEPA refers to the special kind of vacuum cleaner filter they need to use to be able to suck up superfine particles, like human ashes. Still, one Disney custodian said, quote, The Haunted Mansion probably has so much human ash in it that it's not even funny, unquote. And did you know that real skeletons may have been used as props in a popular attraction? This is one of those Disneyland secrets that is slightly terrifying. Apparently, there might be remnants of real human remains in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland. 
when the attraction was built, they didn't feel that the bones looked real enough, so they asked the UCLA Medical Center to borrow some real bones. Since then, most of them have been replaced with fakes, but a few real ones may still be in there. While Disney World is a place for kids and families, apparently some adults like to use it as a place to get it on as well. A former security worker and Reddit user said, quote, People have sex there all the time. All the time. On rides, in parking structures, and when they get caught, they get escorted out. Unless they're underage, then we legally have to call their parents. That one's fun. End quote. And of course, how could we leave out? Employees are rumored to remove people who die so no one dies at Disney World. Now, we know we've brought this up multiple times, but for good reason. In order to avoid having to say that someone died at the Disney Park, employees will allegedly be told to remove a body from the property before declaring it dead. A Reddit user said, quote, Is it true that when someone dies on a ride, they basically cart them off the property before pronouncing them dead so they don't have to say they died at Disneyland? Unquote. Another Reddit user and former employee responds, quote, There's a big reason for that. People don't want their happy memories tarnished. It can actually really help a family to have a place where they can go back to where their child or loved one was having fun before they passed, unquote. While this explanation may make sense, it's pretty morbid either way. A final unsavory fact about the park is how they are rumored to treat their employees. In fact, whisperings that the, quote, brainwash of their employees is not an uncommon thing. While they likely don't go that far, Disney does apparently tend to go a bit overboard when, quote, initiating staff. Culture is top-down, abbreviations are required, and cast members must play the part 100% while on the clock, including always smiling at guests. Water breaks are limited, and employees aren't afforded things like regular work, schedule, or fair pay, despite Disney claiming to be a family-oriented place. Many former staff have spilled the tea and shared their experience. Bottom line, Disney is anything but magical for the employees. Despite all of these tales of pain, blood, and death, we still flock to Disney. Perhaps the park gets much more than their fair share of attention when something goes wrong. After all, death and violence seem downright out of place with the ethos of the happiest place on earth which tries its best to maintain a squeaky clean image. The fact that it's the site of tragic injuries, violent murders, suicides, and other incidents only make people more curious about what really goes on behind scenes. We're fascinated by Disney, both because of the delightful and fancy-free image it provides us, the magic it promises us, and precisely because we know that such magic can't really exist which makes discovering the seedy underbelly of the beast that much more interesting. Wow. Just wow. I want to say it all it all sounds the same but I think it makes it even more creepy how it turns over the same either way you go, either park. Oh yeah. Disneyland, Disney World, like they're 100% sister parks and they sure sound like twin parks to me. Yeah, and then a lot of the stories are crisscrossed, which is why it's so hard to pinpoint which park people are referencing. Mm-hmm. Because as we're going to find out, we're probably going to hear some repeated sounding stuff, but we are definitely going to hear some stuff that we haven't heard. But it's it's hard because it's just, you know, it's a duplicate park. One just has more than the other. And I was wrong in the beginning. I'm sorry. This park is 160 acres, but it was as far as it could go where Disney basically bought half the state. Disney World bought half the state here in Florida. But they got landlocked in. But yes, there is a lot of crossover Mm -hmm. between the two parks. It's like if something at Disneyland is haunted, it's haunted at Disney World. But if you remember last week when we had Rick on, he talked a lot about like occult stuff going on. And I'm curious if maybe that lends to some of the stuff going on. Because there are a lot of claims online of very, I don't want to say evil, okay, but not above board occult type activity, like more malevolent stuff. 
going on at Disney World, right mm. in the happiest place on earth. Mm. So I don't know if it's just crossover stories and people confused or if it's like some kind of conjured up thing. Right. You know, I don't know. Or maybe it's true. And uh, I mean. Maybe. Maybe. I'm, but who are we to say? You know, we just talk about it. We just love it. It's up for everybody else to decide, of course. I mean, we'll have our own thoughts on it at the end like we always do. But yeah, it's um, it's really weird. It's really weird because I ran into a lot of the same stories that yeah. were almost identical. Almost identical. That's so crazy. So crazy. And I think maybe the treatment of staff and that the very strict like rules and regulations that are set on their quote crew members yeah. cast members oh sorry cast yes, members their the employees hey, they are <laughs> actors. I, th- I i think those strict rules may may play a part somehow maybe uh, i mean the same rule apply at both for I mean, it's possible. nobody dies at Disney. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a rumor I think about every single crazy Disney park. to me. Every so one crazy. of them. I did notice that there is one thing different at this one that I didn't notice so much when we did Walt Disney World. And that's violent murder. Mm. Violent murder happened more here. And I think it's because it's L.A. and L.A. has a lot more gang activity. Yeah. Which is not even really all that true. I mean, L.A. is a bad place. So is Orlando, but Disneyland is outside of Orlando, where L.A. is just, it's a rough city. It is a rough city. I'm sure it's beautiful. I I would still love to go there, but it is a rougher city. So, But that is an element that we just don't have here that they have. So I wonder Mm -hmm. if that plays into it at all, because that is some, you know, seems like a lot of the places that we talk about that have activity have violent murders attached to them. And the crazy thing to me, about the, like the violent murders seem to happen in the parking lot. Now, you and I both have been to Disney World, and whoop, to whoop. get to get <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> right, World. so cool. But to get to the parking lot, you drive like forever four miles at forever. least. It's crazy. It, so you is, drive so far to the parking lot that you swear to God you were lost. Oh, absolutely, it's weird. Like you see, you see the archway, and it's like. Disney World. Now drive through three more towns. Yes, it's crazy. (laughs) So So is like Disneyland not like that? And you just kind of drive up and there's a parking lot where gang wars can happen? See, that I don't know. So if you're listening out there, and I know we have have a really good amount of California listeners, Mm -hmm. and I believe uh, more than half of them live near L.A. So if you're listening and you hear this, tweet at us or email us. We just want to know. What's it like when you first drive into Disneyland? Is there like a long drive situation into the parking lot? Or is it like a, I don't know. Drive it, drive into I don't Walmart? Know, I don't know what else to compare. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like a Walmart parking lot. And you get out and then boom, you walk through the gates. Yeah. I, we're not sure because we, we're East Coasters. We're going to be West Coasters soon though. We are. So let us know. But yeah, that's so many parallels. So mm-hmm. many. But I am going to say this. There are better ghost stories here. I think they're better. And I think most of the listeners are also going to think they're better. So with that being said, I think it's time to conclude this Halloween episode with the mistress of creepy. Megan, are you ready? I certainly am. Let's do this. And now time for an ad break. And now back to our show. (laughs) So this week's Halloween Spectacular group of stories and spooky ookies come from wanderwisdom.com, cinemablend.com, hauntedoc.com, and sfgate.com. Disneyland in Anaheim, California is the original the OG Disney theme park. It has been around since July 17, 1955. Since then, over 600 million people have walked through those seemingly magical gates. But legend has it that some visitors never left. You see, Disneyland is said to be very haunted. It is probably one of the most haunted properties in all of California. Guests and cast members alike have come forward with stories of the supernatural and the inside scoop of all the things that happen 
in the happiest place on Earth. When you enter Disneyland, you walk under the train tracks. Just after this, on the left side of the street, next to the City Hall restrooms, is the firehouse. When Walt Disney was alive, he had an apartment on the second floor of this building. He used it as a home base of sorts while the park was being built and stayed there often after Disneyland opened. He also hosted celebrities and VIPs in his apartment. Whenever Walt was in the park, he would light a lamp in the fire station window to let people know he was there. Apparently, Walt never left. According to Disney legend, soon after Uncle Walt's death, a woman from the maintenance crew was cleaning the apartment and noticed that the very lamp he used to light was lit. She turned it off and promptly left, only to see it lit in the window when she got back outside. She then did what anyone would do in that situation. She went back into the apartment and turned the lamp back off. When she went back outside, the lamp, once again, had been relit. She went back in yet again and turned it off. Only this time, she didn't immediately leave the apartment. The lamp turned itself back on right in front of her. Nobody has tried to turn the lamp off since. It has left burning to symbolize Walt Disney's presence in his beloved Disneyland. To this day, cast members report mysterious footsteps and knocking coming from the fire station apartment, especially at night. Many of the stores are supposedly haunted as well. The fourth floor stock room of the Star Trader supposedly has cold spots and a really creepy feeling to it. There are also stories of the merchandise being rearranged on the shelves after the shop is locked up for the night when no one is around. It is also said that the Hatmosphere, the hat booth that sits between America Sings and Tomorrowland Utopia, is haunted. Supposedly, the sewing machine they use to embroider names on hats never gets warm, even after being used all day long. One of the ice cream carts is also supposedly haunted. People have reported hearing a woman's voice, even <laughs> when there is not a single woman around. On Main Street, there have been sightings of a lady in white. She appears in and around the stores on Main Street and is dressed in clothing from the turn of the 20th century, almost an identical story to the one we read from Walt Disney World. Legend says she died on the property in the early 1900s, but never moved on. There are rumors that sometimes, late at night, cast members driving on the monorail would see a young man running along the monorail tracks at the back of the park, in the spot where 19-year-old Thomas Cleveland died. One minute, the figure was there, and the next, he was gone. Guests and cast members have reported seeing Disco Debbie. Debbie is a glowing green ghost inside Space Mountain, who is reported to be a cast member who died of an aneurysm behind the Space Mountain building. People have also reported seeing a man with reddish hair and a red face. He usually gets into a seat next to a single rider. By the time the ride ends, the man has disappeared. This is the ghost of a man who died on the ride in 1970s. They call him Mr. One-Way, and he is also sometimes seen in the cast member locker rooms inside the Space Mountain building. The America Sings attraction. This is the big, round, rotating building at the east end of Tomorrowland. Originally, it was the carousel of progress, showcasing predictions of products for the near and not-so-near future. It closed in the early 1970s and reopened in the summer of 1974 as America Sings, a show highlighting the musical history of the first 200 years of the United States. Two weeks after the new attraction opened, 
a new ride operator, 18-year-old Deborah Stone, was killed when she was crushed between the wall of the moving audience section of the building and the stationary stage. Ever since, cast members working the ride have reported hearing a voice tell them, Be careful. The America Sings building is also said to be haunted by the ghost of a teenage boy who died in the speed tunnel section of the People Mover, which is on the outer edge of the building. The boy died while trying to jump from one car to another and was dragged along the track before the ride was able to come to a stop. There's also the ghost of Dolly Young, who haunts the Matterhorn. Some people say they have even seen the apparition of Dolly herself. One writer says, quote, I worked on that ride for several years, and I never saw her, but I sure did feel her. After the ride closes for the day, two people have to walk the track, one on each side of the mountain. You walk the ride, starting at the bottom and working your way to the top. It is done to look for lost and found items. Every time I was lucky enough to get a track walking shift, I had an uneasy feeling, like someone was watching me. I was always convinced that it was Dolly, and so I would often say hi to her. The feeling was always the worst, in the big cavern in the middle of the ride, and at Dolly's dip, the spot where she died. In fact, the work lights in the tunnel near Dolly's dip always seemed to be burnt out. In six years, I don't think I ever saw those lights working. I hated running the track at the end of my shift, and I usually try to get someone else to do it for me. End quote. There are several ghosts that haunt the haunted mansion. The first ghost story happened when the mansion was still being built back in the 1960s. One of the sound designers was in the seance room and heard music coming from behind the wall. He thought it was a radio, but there was never any talking or commercials, just music. He kept hearing the music for days. Finally, he decided to just put a speaker near the spot the music was coming from, just to mask it. A former cast member who worked at Disney states, quote, I heard a rumor that the spell book in Seance Circle was a real spell book and that Madame Leota was reciting spells from that book. Rumor had it that each morning, when cast members would arrive at the attraction to open the ride, they would find the book in a different place than it was the previous night. End quote. There is also a story about a woman who came to the haunted mansion to sprinkle her young son's ashes in the ride, since his dying wish was to be one of the haunted mansion's ghosts. She was told she couldn't spread the ashes there, but apparently she snuck back and scattered her son's ashes anyway. After that, people reported seeing the ghost of a small boy crying near the exit. I guess he didn't want to be a haunted mansion ghost after all. Supposedly, there was a boy ghost who was seen in the video monitors at the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. He can be seen in the control tower, all while being caught on surveillance cameras. He always seems to be happy and enjoying himself. But when the boat comes back into the station, it's always empty. It has also been said that Walt Disney's ghost and a couple of other ghosts sometimes haunt the Disney gallery above Pirates of the Caribbean. The gallery was originally designed to be Walt's personal apartment, as the one above Main Street Fire Station was kind of small. It's the spooky season, so it's a great time to look at the spooky history of the happiest place on Earth. Even at Halloween, Disneyland isn't exactly the scariest theme park. Still, for a place that's been around for more than 65 years, it has many interesting stories to tell, and that includes, of course, ghost stories. Over the decades, a number of mysterious events have taken place within the gates of Disneyland. If reports are to be believed, a number of locations are actually haunted by spirits. So we've decided to go to the internet 
and find personal stories of paranormal activity. And you can decide whether or not you, the listener, think something is actually happening here. Story 1 In August of 2019, I saw something at the Disneyland Resort that rattled me to my core. It was just a subtle, creepy moment, but it stuck with me ever since. After Disney's D23 Expo in Anaheim, my sister and I headed to the theme parks for a late lunch. Since we had bags filled with merchandise from the expo, we rented a locker near the Disney California Adventure entrance. The parks were crowded that Saturday, and we saw several people wander out of the nearby restroom, wiping the sweat from their foreheads. The locker area was small, wonderfully cool, and thankfully uncrowded. It was just us and a young girl with fair skin that I noticed out of the corner of my eye. She crouched against the far wall, digging out the bottom row locker. As my sister and I chit-chatted about our first ride, we kept our voices low as to not bother her. After a couple minutes, I realized that the girl had been crouching for quite a while. Though I couldn't tell how old she was, I thought it was odd that she was alone for so long. I didn't want to rudely look directly at her, so I kept track from the corner of my eye, just to make sure that she was okay. The girl played with her long yellow skirt as if dusting it off. I thought the pattern was out of place, either red polka dots or strawberries. It looked like something a person might wear on a dapper day. Suddenly, the girl turned around. I stopped keeping track of her and focused on my sister, who was stuffing our things into our locker. Still, I could sense the girl's eyes on us. I looked again from the side, hardly able to see her in my peripheral vision. She was standing now, staring at us. I noticed her short, dirty blonde hair and the skirt's length as it cascaded to her ankles. She was taller and older than I expected, probably a young teenager. What was she doing? Why was she looking at us? It was just too weird, and I needed to know. I quickly crammed my bag into the corner locker and shut it. I could still see the girl watching us. All at once, I gave up my reservations and turned around. No one was there. The locker area was totally empty. There wasn't a thing that resembled a yellow dress or a girl with fair skin. For a moment, I stared at the emptiness with goosebumps racing down my arms. Are we going over to Disneyland? Asked my sister. She looks toward me and noticed my flustered face. What's wrong? Did you see that girl? I shook near those lockers. Yeah, I saw someone, my sister muttered. She had noticed the girl too, but I didn't have to explain. My sister was already staring at the empty row of lockers near us. I watched the color swiftly leave her face. No, no, no. I told my sister about the ghosts I'd seen at Disneyland before, and now she had seen one too. The moment was haunting and darkened the sunny afternoon. My sister reopened the locker and yanked our things from it. With our arms full, we rushed towards Disneyland, gripping our bags and unable to shake the ghostly girl from our minds. Story 2 I worked custodial from 2002 to 2004 and had some bizarre things happen to me. One night in New Orleans, I was emptying the trash from the exit of the Haunted Mansion, right where the escalator ramp takes you up. I came the back way down the employee stairs and saw an elderly woman in an antique looking wheelchair sitting in the hallway. I thought nothing of it and opened the door to where the trash can was. As I held the door open with my foot tying the trash bag, I thought to myself, what was that guest doing in an employee only hallway? The park has been closed for a while. When I turned back to the hallway, not even five seconds later, the lady was gone. I was kind of creeped out, but shrugged it off and went about my business. As the night went on, I could not stop thinking about that woman in the wheelchair. 
It wasn't the rental wheelchairs. This one looked like it was made of wood. I finished my shift and forgot about it. I used to hear tons of stories from coworkers about certain areas being haunted, so I would always wander around the park exploring. Disney is creepy when it's empty, so I can see why people would have stories of being watched or having strange feelings. I remember sweeping the line for the Roger Rabbit one night, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a man standing near me in a navy blue t-shirt and black diggy style shorts. I asked if he needed anything, and when I looked up, he was gone. I walked pretty fast all the way through the line looking for him, and nobody was in there. Nobody was in there because Toontown was closed. It seemed like everyone had a haunted mansion, haunted bathroom, Tom Sawyer, or Toontown story, so I kept the strange things that happened to me to myself. I felt like nobody would believe me anyway. A few months later, I was talking with a woman that had worked there for a long time. Someone had committed suicide in the parking structure that summer. So we were talking about deaths in the park and the possibility of the supernatural. She told me a story about sweeping inside the haunted mansion at the bottom of the elevators after the park was closed and seeing an elderly woman in a wheelchair. When she looked up to speak to her, the room was empty. I thought to myself, no way. How familiar. I didn't tell her what happened to me, but I had a lump in my throat and felt pretty creeped out for a long time. I was always curious about spirits and the supernatural, but wasn't sure if I believed in that kind of stuff. I'm still not sure if I believe in that stuff, but I cannot explain who those people were or where they came from. Story 3 So, I worked in third shift custodial. Everyone jokes around about the park being haunted, especially if you're new. I was in my first year as third shift custodial. I had already heard all sorts of ghost stories from other cast members, so I was afraid to work alone anywhere in the park. At this point, I hadn't had anything happen to me till this night. I'll never forget it. So, I was working in Toontown, and I was assigned to work in Mickey's basement, which is below Mickey's house. There is a set of bathrooms, a break room, and a small gym. I started off by cleaning the men's bathroom, and went over to the women's bathroom. As I was in the women's bathroom, I started to hear something moving around. I wasn't sure what it was. I ignored it and continued to work. Then I started to sweep the gym, and again... I heard something moving. This time, I heard it coming from the men's bathroom. So I shouted, Hello? Anyone in the men's bathroom? There was no response. So I took a look in the men's bathroom, and nothing. No one was in there. So I continued to work. As I'm in the break room, I hear it again. Something moving around in the men's bathroom. I go look again, and the trash can was in the middle of the bathroom. I just thought maybe I didn't move it back when I was cleaning. So I moved it back to the side. I go back to cleaning the break room. Then I started to sweep and mop all the floors. As soon as I started to mop, there it goes again. Movement in the men's bathroom. I go to look at the trash can, and it was moved again. This time, it was on the opposite side of the room. That's when I started to get scared. I moved it back and was trying to rush out of there. I had already finished the bathrooms and the gym. When I was halfway done in the break room, I can hear the trash can move again. This time, I ignore it and try to move as fast as I can. At this point, I'm scared. I don't even want to be down there. I'm thinking in my head, if there's something down here, it can hurt me. I just need to hurry. I'm almost done. And that's when I hear, right off my left shoulder, Get out. In the most creepiest voice. I kind of froze. I could feel my hair standing up. I grabbed all of my stuff and ran out of there. I didn't even finish mopping. I was just so scared, I didn't want to finish. I just ran out of there. To this day, I won't step foot down there. After that, 
I had heard other stories from other cast members who had experiences down there, and every story had something to do with the men's bathroom. From hearing things and seeing shadowy figures, I've had other experiences in the park, but this one was by far the scariest. Story 4 I used to work for the resort back in 2014 when it was called Soarin' Over California. There are two theaters, Theater A and Theater B. B side was supposed to be the haunted side. That's the theater that oddly breaks down most of the time. The story behind it was that California Adventure used to be a parking lot. Trams used to take people from their cars to the entrances. Well, one day, when the trams were going by, a little girl happened to walk in the middle of the street, and the tram ran her over. As your tram takes off, there is a cast member in the theater watching to make sure that the guests are okay and that the ride is operating properly. I was the lucky one this time and was working in that position. Below the screen is a basement, and no one is allowed down there during the duration of the ride. While the ride was moving, I was watching the monitors, and all of a sudden, I hear footsteps, either going up or down the stairs from the basement. I turned around, and no one was there. I turned back around nervously, waiting for the ride to end. At that moment, I felt like I was being watched from behind. The hairs on my arms stood up. After that day, I always had someone trade me their position. Pretty creepy. Story 5 I used to work the swing shift at the stroller shop. One night, I was clearing fantasy land of strollers just past 1am. A co-worker and I were between the carousel and Dumbo, when we heard children laughing. We decided to find security and let them know that there were still guests inside the park. But as we started walking towards Matterhorn, the Dumbo ride turned on, music and all. Since we had just finished collecting strollers from the Casey Jones and Dumbo queue, we knew there weren't any attractions, cast members, or anyone operating the ride. There are many other stories of hauntings at Disneyland. Everything from the trains, monorails, haunted mansion, Tomorrowland, and everything in between seems to have a story. And these were just a few of what seemed like hundreds. Even Adam Barry, paranormal researcher, co-host of Kindred Spirits, believes that ghosts have the ability to choose where they go when they stay behind on this plane. Barry said, talking about Walt Disney, quote, Of course he would stay at this park if he could. If ghosts can be where they want to be, why wouldn't you be at the happiest place on earth, especially if you built it? End quote. Most people enjoy a good ghost story, and Disneyland Resort in California has certainly found itself with a few over the years. Some are tragic and some are romantic. Walt Disney himself may have stayed behind, but maybe he stayed in the afterlife to enjoy what he built, and others may have decided to join him. For the most part, these are nothing more than stories, but what great stories they are. Happy Halloween, Booze Crew. Happy Halloween! (laughs) Spooky. Go take a haunted trip. I love, 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 love Halloween. I yes. love it so oh, much. It brings everything great in the year. You know? Uh, it's like welcome to the good weather. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's the spooky time of year, too. It, you know, who doesn't? I think everybody loves it. So, hey, good stories and very, very detailed stories from yes. people who actually work there. The story of the dude working down in the basement, the, mm-hmm. the men's bathroom. Oh, yeah. Man, that's creepy. I, I think the creepiest one for me was the two sisters in the locker room. Yeah. <laughs> she had such vivid detail of what she saw on that girl. I thought of you and your sister when I, when I was writing that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a Ugh. lot of stuff. Ugh. And there's the, the, the Dolly Young. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the Dolly's dip thing. And I came across the monorail 
ghost thing quite a few times. Yeah. And those, that story of the monorail ghost was actually one of the ones that crossed over. Mm. That, the haunted mansion. So these, those are the ones, there's the lady in white is yeah. also supposed near, to be at Disneyland. Near Main Street, right? Yes. Yeah. Same story. Yep. So it's hard to tell, but I mean, it'd be hard to argue that these stories didn't originate at the original place. And if you're, you know, doing research and they keep popping up in multiple places, whether they belong to Disneyland or Disney World, they are mentioned multiple times in multiple different websites written by different people. I just, I don't know, man. Maybe there's a Disney portal. Oh. To hell. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So, I mean, there's just, you know, there's so many possibilities. So, yeah. I mean, we've we've learned a lot about the Disneys. We, so, you know. we certainly have. We still got a few more to do, but we're going to wait to, you know, do those in the future. But uh, now that you know the, see, these things about Disney that maybe you didn't once know, I have a question for you. Is it the question? Is it real? Well, Megan's husband, we should ask <laughs> Megan. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with different things to say. So, uh. so like I said, you know, we learned we we did know a lot of stuff about Disney going into this, but we knew about Disney World. Mm-hmm. Now that we've learned quite a bit about Disneyland, what do you think? Do you think it's real? I know. I said yes on Disney World, and with so many similarities and so many similar stories i mean even down to the cast member rules and i mean everything just seems so intense on this side the not happiest place on earth side of things i have to think yes both of them have something going on and i i may be totally wrong but I really feel like it has something to do with the quote unquote, no one dies at Disney mm-hmm. rule. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody dies and you literally just hold their body hostage until you can deal with it. Like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. It's... What does that do for that, for the person it's that crazy. died? Yeah, yeah, like, no, it's... what? What? <laughs> it's, it's definitely an um an emotional filled thing to happen. And yeah. Anger and sadness. I get, I get what you're saying. It's, I just, I find it so interesting and so crazy, just crazy. So yes, I do believe it is haunted. Fair. So what about you? Well, before I get into it, I just have to ask a question. Is it real? Well, other me, is it possible <laughs> that you said you could be wrong? Did I hear that right? What? How can you say that about Disneyland, but you can't say that to me? I feel <laughs> like an injustice has been put upon me. But, uh, so anyways, so I would, I feel like I have to say yes. Mm-hmm. Because I believe that Disney World is, and here we're adding in the factor of, like I said earlier, violent death. You know, that's something mm-hmm. I'm sure that has happened at Disney World, but it seems like something that's happened more frequently here. Because, again, just like with Walt Disney World, I didn't write out everything. There's still a lot more that happened here. Yeah. I just touched on the ones that I thought were more interesting. So, I mean, right out the gate, I'm not going to take a long time to get around to it. Yes, I do I do believe that it could be haunted for all the same exact reasons that I said for Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. I just don't think I could say yes for one and not the other. And especially this is like the OG place where I'm I'm sure. I mean, not to mention, this is in the West, you know. Like during the, the the gold rush held these lands and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. You yeah. Know? No, seriously. And I know it sounds crazy, but lots of bad things happen then. Yeah. So hundred percent. I believe people really do have experiences at these parks and I do believe that they're haunted. I, I always say this, but I have to keep saying it. I don't know to what extent because I just don't know, mm-hmm. but you can't have this many people have experiences and be like, well, nothing's happening here. Right. So, I mean, even Adam Barry, who's very well known. I mean, I know he's a TV guy and I give, I give the people on TV a hard time, but before they were TV people, they were doing this stuff. Oh yeah. So, you know, they still have a reputation about them that is believable. And this isn't something that he went out and did for TV. He just talked about Disneyland. So yeah, I tend to take his word on it. You know, like he thinks it is good enough for me. So yes, I 
do believe stuff is happening at the Disney's. Both the of Disney, them. Both the, of them. The sister Disney's. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, so that's super cool, man. And I'm I'm super happy that we did these. Me too. And thanks again to our buddy Rick for helping us out on the first one. Go yes. check him out at Maximum Commodities. It's a great show. And this was fun. I, I would really... I'm, uh, I would, I'm really looking forward to doing the other ones because I'm really curious to see what they got going on. Oh, hey, cat. <laughs> cat just Katie. crawled out from underneath our bed. Hey, kitty. So I guess this is kind of, oh, no. That means I, I almost always go by this. You almost missed it. That it gets the big old seal of approval. So I guess this is where we're going to leave you on your Halloween. I hope you're getting lots of candy out there, everybody. So, Booze Crew, uh, where can they find us, Megan? They can find us on Instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. You can also find us on Twitter at for the booze and over on the tubes of you, YouTube at for the booze. <laughs> and don't forget, send in your spooky stories because, again, didn't have one or EVPs. Kind of bummed. We didn't. So, yeah, for the booze 12 at gmail.com and your. Show location suggestions. Yes. And we would love to do something yeah. from someone. I know you guys got to have some spooky place that you want to learn a little more about or just have us do. I Absolutely. mean, we, we would love to do that. Absolutely. Somebody out there, buy me a chair. I'm tired of sitting in this chair. <laughs> and don't forget five stars wherever you listen, preferably on Apple. But hey, we just want to know you're listening and you're enjoying the show. That's all we want. And, yeah, if you uh, rate, review, it helps us out very, very much, and we would like to definitely do more with this show. That's right. Maybe get a little recognition, so maybe some sponsors will be like, talk about us to your people. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess this is going to take us out, and I, I guess we'll be back next week with another really good one. It won't be a Halloween one, but, you know, it is what it is. Well, so. thank you for listening, everybody, and we will see you on the next one. Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween.